Tressie McMillan Cotton. Welcome back to The Daily Show. Welcome back to me indeed. It's a pleasure to be back. Right, or, or do I say professor? I, I, I'd love to know what you prefer because you, you have so many prestigious titles. You know, it's with New York Times bestselling author, or you know, it could be professor, it could be MacArthur. Is it a genius grant that they give you? You can say that. I think <laughs> I, I'm not supposed to say that. Oh. The, the foundation would prefer not. But oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So they say you're a genius, but they're, not, they're like, you're not allowed to say it of yourself. Exactly. Kind of like your mother tells you some things are best said about I you by others. I see. Yeah. Oh, you're amazing, but don't ever think that about yourself. Huh. I, and, yeah. That's yeah. A, well, well, then I will say to you, the genius professor that is Tracy, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very and, much. And, and what a time. What a time to have you on. Because, you know, there, there are a few people who I've enjoyed um, learning from, engaging with, um, studying. Because you, you're not just a professor, you're a sociologist. You're somebody who looks at the world, you study what mm -hmm. has happened, what is happening, and how you think it will happen going forward. Mm -hmm. And right now feels like an interesting time of everythingness going on. Let, let's start with, you know, one of our favorite platforms that we chat on all the time, mm -hmm. Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's been a really interesting time on Twitter right now. Right? Yes, that's With... an understatement. I, I try, I try, yes, I specialize yes. in those. Um, <laughs> I, I would love to know your opinion yeah. on Twitter itself and how we see its role in our society. There are some who say, because it is a business, Elon can do whatever he wants. He paid it, he paid for it, he can take it, he can, he can do as he pleases. On the other hand, there are people who are saying, Elon taking over Twitter, which has become this public square, only goes to show how, you know, dangerous it can be to have billionaires defining what everybody else can speak or what, what, what their speech might or may not be. And all of those things are true. They are not true, to my mind, in equal parts. So I think the, the bigger story here uh, is that we outsourced the public square to the private sector. Right, oh. Twitter becomes, or it feels like the public square, but it has never operated in practice as a public square. It cannot, it is not owned by the state or by the people. And in fact, one of the things that uh, minority people, uh, queer people have said for years about Twitter is that they could not participate the same way that really powerful brands could participate or politicians or particular, especially trolls. Uh, and so in a true public square, there would be some way for people to talk back, right, to the powers that be. That's never been Twitter. That's never been any social media platform. That is the difference between a business and something that is truly public. So it is a business. Uh, Elon Musk can buy it, as he was eventually, you know, forced to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he wrote a check and then his behind had to cash it. And that's how we find ourselves here, uh, that we have used it to try to express sort of, you know, right, people right, power. Right. Does not mean that the people own it or have any authority over it. What that says to me and what I think it says to many other people is that there should be a public space. We are in an information society. Information is power uh -huh, and it is money. Uh -huh. Why don't we have a civic public square that exists on the internet? Elon Musk buying Twitter would not have mattered if the state was competing with Twitter. That's interesting. Yeah. But, but do you think, but do you think, you know, many of these ideas are sound except when you add in that the state in question would be America. Yes, you know? that's no, <laughs> no, and, I, and I, I mean this not because of America's ineptness or anything, but rather because America sees everything through the lens of, you know, left or right, Democrat, Republican, yes. always. It doesn't matter what the yeah. issue is. And it feels like America itself would never be able to create something like this because both sides wouldn't agree on what mm -hmm. the thing should or shouldn't be. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, we see this debate about everything that is publicly governed, yeah. particularly our schools, right? Uh, where we cannot agree on whether or not our schools are indoctrinating our children, Yes. or should be preparing them for the economy of the future. Somehow, Americans want it to do both, right? Don't teach my children anything, but make sure that they can be competitive <laughs> in the economy <laughs> of the future. Uh, but you know what? That is the mess of democratic participation. It does not mean that we get it right. Mm -hmm. It means that there is a way to get it right sometimes. Hmm. So we don't have to have the whole thing figured out for us to invest in publicness. So one of, uh, you know, I teach at a public university mm -hmm. in North Carolina, uh, and I teach a lot of students who will go on to work in libraries and in the information sector. You know, libraries are, to me, the shining example on the hill of what a public space can be. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. 
but do they welcome people into them and meet people where they are? Absolutely. Can America do that? Yes. Now, do we have to fight to do it every step of the way? Absolutely. But we can have that fight. Mm -hmm. You can't have that fight when an entity is owned by a single megalomaniac. Huh. <laughs> you know, when, when, we, when we talk about these spaces and we talk about these ideas and we talk about these conversations, there's no denying that Twitter and many places like it have benefited from the diverse array of voices that have now oh. been part of the platform. You know, you, you wouldn't know what was happening on the ground in the same way in Iran were it not for Twitter. Exactly. You know, you wouldn't know what was happening on the ground in the same way in Charlottesville were it not for Twitter. It, it, it has become, as you say, it has the illusion at times of a public square, but many people have used it to that effect. I, I would love to know, you know, from your perspective, as somebody who has seen your own journey, you know, from general obscurity to now becoming somebody whose voice is so respected and recognized. You know, you write for the New York Times as part of their op-ed. You, you, you're shaping people's opinions. How do you find the balance, or, or how do you inspire people you mm -hmm. teach to think critically about the world that they're living in? Because half of the things we know are taught to us. And then at some point we have to decipher between yeah. what we've been taught is the truth and then what is the truth or where the gray even exists. How, how do you even begin that journey as a teacher and as a learner who's constantly, because you're uh -huh. constantly learning? Well, I think that is part of it. I try to always be a learner. It's really easy, I think, <clears throat> to develop and grow in your career and forget how overwhelming it is to learn something new for the first time. So I try to be an idiot as much as humanly possible. I love that. I love uh, that. I, you... I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I enroll in something, I take up something that I'm just absolutely horrible at doing because I want to feel how vulnerable it feels to learn. And it is a very vulnerable space. Right. So when I am feeling generous, I think that there is a not insignificant part of the American public that isn't so much afraid of the other as they are of being ignorant. And some people would rather be angry than stupid Interesting. And so figuring it out is actually really hard. This is something I've learned uh, as I've taught people. Uh, and so there's a certain amount of, of vulnerability I think we have to uh, share with each other to say that just because I've achieved something in one part of the world mm -hmm. or in one profession doesn't mean I know everything. Now the challenge for us <laughs> is that we have a culture that absolutely likes to turn every success story into a universal story yes. of genius, yes. right? So you founded Facebook and now you can solve world hunger, as if those have anything to do with each other. Uh, you know, so that is a problem of the culture, but I don't right. think it has to be that way. And I actually think one of the good things about Twitter has been how many people have been willing to model learning in public mm -hmm. so that other people could see that it doesn't have to strip you of your status uh, or your position, that learning can happen without you, you know, flailing about. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'll miss that about Twitter. It As ends... in it's gone? You think no, it's... I, it ends eventually. Listen, oh, all okay. social media apps end. Right. Uh, there'll be something new, obviously, but I don't know that anything else would be able to capture. That was mm -hmm. one of the best things about Twitter. Um, it was a space for people to see different kinds of genius. I like that. That you could be a good in one domain, still learning in another domain, that you could risk it. It is something uh, that I enjoyed doing personally. And I think that it was never the, the app's intention. Listen, mm -hmm. people turned it into that. That right. is not what it was designed to do. Do you think that's because we innately want to do that as human beings? I do. I, I have to believe that human beings are fundamentally curious. And social media is only popular because we're curious. We go there because we want to see. We're nosy. We, you know, <laughs> we, we want to rubberneck the world, you know? Uh, and so what it has done, it is, it's made it profitable, made our curiosity profitable. Right. Uh, and it has made our curiosity uh, politically polarized. But that doesn't mean the curiosity is bad. I actually think it is a thing that separates us, you know, from the rest of, uh, well, no, the animal kingdom. I don't want to, I don't want to, Throw shade on animals. Animals are good. They I are mean, pretty curious. Yeah. They actually are pretty curious. Yeah. I think at heart we're apes if we're lucky. Right. You know? Right. 
Uh, but it does separate us, I think, from like a brick wall. It yeah. does indeed. It does indeed. Shade to all the bricks has been thrown. That is correct. The animals have been spent. I could talk to you. I could talk to you for hours. But that's why we have your books. That's why we have some of your tweets. Thank you again for joining me on the show. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. One more time. Church of